Good morning and welcome to Christians Are Sheep, a beginner's guide to meditation. My name is Ron Heinrichs and I'm the host of this show. Uh, let's see. I've done my five minutes of stretching this morning, being thankful for all my blessings. <clears throat> and then I did 15 minutes of exercising, kind of burning off a little bit of excess energy. And now it's time for a little devotional, a little getting ready to calm the mind. This morning's devotional is called The Power of God's Word. On Christmas Eve, 1968, the Apollo 8 astronauts, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders, became the first humans to enter lunar orbit. As they circled the moon 10 times, they shared images of the moon and the earth during a live broadcast. They took turns reading from Genesis 1. At the 40th anniversary celebration, Borman said, We were told that on Christmas Eve we would have the largest audience that had ever listened to a human voice. And the only instructions that we got from NASA was to do something appropriate. The Bible verses spoken by the Apollo 8 astronauts still plant seeds of truth into the listening hearts of people who hear the historical recording. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Revealing his free offer to salvation, he invites us to turn from our sin and receive his mercy and forgiveness. He declares the divine authority of his thoughts and actions, which are too vast for us to truly understand. Still, God gives us opportunity to share his life-transforming words of scripture, which point to Jesus and affirm that he is responsible for the spiritual growth of his people. The Holy Spirit helps us share the gospel as the Father fulfills all his promises according to his perfect plan and pace. A thought for today, who will you share scripture with today? Who first shared the Bible with you? In the prayer for this morning, Almighty Creator and Sustainer of the world, please give us opportunities daily to share your wisdom. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And for those of you who have, a, have a doll, 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 all the time you have, uh, you all have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. For everyone else who has uh, a little more time to get into the quantum world, let's continue on uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, You Are the Placebo. Ah, here we go. And this morning we're going to read... Why meditation can be so challenging. <sighs> okay, hang on just a second. Got a little drip <sighs> on the nose. There. The analytical neocortex uses all the five senses to determine reality. It's very preoccupied with putting all of its awareness on the body, the environment, and time. And if you're the least bit stressed, then your attention will be directed to and will amplify all three of these elements. When you're under the gun of the fight or flight emergency system and you switch on your adrenaline, just like an animal threatened in the wild, all you, all of your Attention will be placed on taking care of your body, finding escape routes in your environment, 
and figuring out how much time you have to make it to safety. You overfocus on problems, obsess about your looks, dwell on your pain, think about how little time you have to do what you need to do, and rush to get things done. Sound familiar? <laughs> because you're so hyper-focused on this external world and your problems in it when you're living in survival, it's easy to think that what you see and experience is all there is. And without the external world, you're no one, nobody, no thing, in no place, and in no time. How frightful that is for an ego that's trying to control all of its reality by constantly reaffirming an identity. It might make it easier to remind yourself that when you're in, when you're living in survival, what you sense is truly just the tip of the iceberg only a limited array of ingredients making up your external world. You, ident you identify with the many variations and combinations in your external world that reflect back to you who you think you are, but that doesn't mean there isn't more. In fact, every time you learn something new, you change how you see the world. The world hasn't really changed, only your perception of it has changed. We'll learn more about perception in the next chapter. For now, it's enough to keep in mind that if, that if your goal is to affect change and you haven't been able to make it happen with, your, with all your external world resources, then clearly you'll need to look outside the limits of what you see, sense, and experience for your answers. You'll need to pull from the resources you haven't yet identified from the unknown. So in that sense, the unknown is your friend, not your foe. It's the place where the answers lie. Okay, that was very interesting. Again, uh, Dr. Joel is talking about calming the mind. And the baby steps baby steps we're working on lend itself to that, to calming the mind, uh, not being in, in stress, being in a relaxed mode. Anyway, that's the reading for today. <laughs> you all have a great day. And remember, the verses were that I'm that I'm learning. Psalm 119:11. I have thought much about your words, and have hidden them in my heart, so that they would keep me from sin. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow. <laughs>